you better preach it, preach it, say it, say it. Hi, right, welcome to Preach Camp Preach. Welcome to another episode, another sermon. This is strictly about the playoffs. Uh, NFL is 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 uh, got the twelve teams going for the Super Bowl trophy, the Lombardi Trophy. That, that will take place in Atlanta. I'm here with Rashad again, man. How's it going? Going good, man. Going good. I, I'm so excited uh, for the playoffs. Disappointed in my team did it, couldn't show up on the last week seventeen. But hey, we didn't deserve to make it. So. Um, I'm rooting against uh I'm rooting against the Eagles, obviously. Uh hope they get smacked by fifty. <laughs> I don't know about fifty, but they they probably will lose the first round. I don't I don't trust Nick Foles. I mean, I know they kinda got hot, but I don't yeah, think I don't think a, they're gonna have another run how they had last year. I sure hope not. Uh so we're going to our playoff predictions. Uh how we're gonna break it down is we're gonna start in the AFC, uh work our way through the wild card, the division around to the championship match, and then who's who will represent the AFC in the Super Bowl, and then same thing for the NFC. Uh, going to talk about if we you know we have if we have the same game and we have a disagreement about who we think can win winner. We're going to talk about that, and if we have if we have different games, we're going to go see why you know see what our thought process is on that. So with the wild card starting golf, uh, let's go with the three versus the six, and that's the Houston Texans versus the Indianapolis Colts. Great season by both. Texas started off 0 3. Colts was at the, I think at one point, uh maybe like one and five. Yeah. Yeah. So these are two teams that probably, you know, with that record, um, very, very few teams with that record probably made the made the playoffs. I thought Texas, you know, there was about to fire Bill O'Brien. The Colts is like, yeah, they ain't ready yet. Luck not ready yet. But both teams turned the switch and both are in the playoffs. Uh, I think one game separated both of them. In this matchup, who you got? I'm going with Houston. Um, I like their I like their defense a little bit more than I like uh, the Colts, and I just think uh, overall they're a little bit better team. Not by much, but they're just a little bit better. And then plus the Colts just played them a few weeks ago, and it was a close game. So I think, you know, third time rubber match. I think Houston at home is going to probably pull it off. This is the first time Houston actually is healthy. Uh, as far as least, at least for the star, the stars that is, um, going into the playoffs or going into the end of the season, uh, you know they always injury bound, injury bound. Um, I'm actually going with the Indianapolis Colts in this one. I just think the I've all I've always I've always had a knock on Bill O'Brien, um, and he had to prove me wrong uh, for me to for me to uh, change that opinion. Um, I just think the Indianapolis Colts offensive line can can hang in there with the Houston Texans D D line. Um, and I think they they can control the line of scrimmage. They can run the ball on them, and then they also can give luck time. And what the Texans don't have is a secondary, particularly at the cornerback position. They have the safeties. They don't have, they don't have the corners. Um, yeah, T.Y. Yeah. Gat. The weak spot on defense. So I, I feel like, you know, having time, if Luck and Watt – I mean, look, if Clowney and Watt can't get back there uh, when guys like, you know, Quinn Nelson and them boys up, up front, uh, it's going to be a long day in the office, especially for those corners. Um, and I, you know, of course, you know, of course, Andrew Luck is easily a top five quarterback in the NFL, and and you see what what he brings as soon as he's back healthy. What how great of a team the coach really are. Um, and on the offensive side, as for with Houston, I mean, it's just is this Deshaun Watson improvising with D Hop, and I would hope that the coach, if you're listening to me in Dallas, please, like, why just double this man. Let let somebody else beat you. If somebody else beat you, somebody else go for 100 yards, then that's just how it is. Like, don't don't sit here and let D Hop beat you like that. Cause I mean, it's one guy. There's no Demaris Thomas. Kuti uh Kiki Kuti might not play. Um the running game isn't as strong as it once was. And there's no offensive line for the, you know, Texans. So let I don't know. I, I just I just feel like the, the coach defense has shown improvements and as a coach, you would think and they would double team D hop and force something else. Um and that's what I'm hoping for. So yeah. that's why I got coached. Yeah, you know, most times when teams get hot, they normally do keep going all the way. But I think the coach look is kinda gonna run out. Um their X factor for me is gonna probably be Marlon Mack. If they win, it'll be because he had a good game. And for the Texans, if they if they win the game, I think it's gonna be based on Deshaun Watson using his legs, you know, to extend some plays, make a few plays here and there, because it's gonna be a, a close game. So let's go to the four and five matchup. Chargers and Ravens. I think this is a rematch from what week sixteen. 
I'm going with the Chargers in this game. They have proven to be the best road team in the NFL. Um, I think they're they're suited to play on the road because it's like us against the world type mentality. Uh, mentality. And after seeing Lamar Jackson and now knowing what you're up against, um, I think it's a better advantage for them. And I think I think Chargers, Phil Rivers, and the boys with a healthy Melvin Gordon, like he's more healthy. I know he he tweeted his ankle last game, but he could have came back if he wanted to. Um, the, you know, they realized the, the Chiefs was already up too much, so they wasn't going to get the one seed. So this is the second best team in the AFC. I mean, yes, they're the five seed, but if you're going by record wise, they're the second best team. And the Chargers, like I said, they went on the road to beat Pittsburgh, went on the road to beat Kansas City. And I know the Raven defense is something special, because it's very special. And Lamar Jackson is very special. I just, I just think it's it gotta be at some point it gotta be Philip Rivers, his his turn, his legacy needs to be submitted at some point, and he needs to he needs to make a run in the playoffs because that's something that he has lacked. Um, so I'm, I'm going with Chargers. I'm going with uh, to the Rivers. I'm also going with the Chargers. Um, I don't think Lamar Jackson can make enough plays throwing the ball, which is what it'll probably come down to. And then the first game, the Chargers weren't really that healthy, and they still almost won the game. Um, so I think the Chargers, they, they have this, they're just more talented. And mm-hmm. after already seeing what the Ravens can bring on offense and defense, I think the Chargers will be well prepared to, to win that game. And I think Ravens, Ravens prop, you know, they, they, they got big guys in front. And I think they're, I think they, they can still control the line of scrimmages on offense. But, um, like people got to realize Chargers was driving on that last play before it turned the gates fumble. If, they they was really about to go down the drive and, and win the game. And if the Chargers are up three points or more on the final drive on Lamar Jackson's hand, I I think Chargers come out with that defense will come out with the win because I don't like you say I don't see him making that enough plays in the passing game to win. He might you know run the game run, but if it's the crunch time, he got to pass. He got to pass. And I think I think Chargers can can uh, finally do it. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't I don't see him making enough. Throws and they only he only can run the ball so much. So if with the time the Chargers have had since the first game, if they kind of can scheme their their defensive package to just always have somebody to spy them, they'll be fine. Because Willie Snead hasn't really been done doing much the last few games. Uh, John Brown hasn't done much, and outside of that throw to Andrews, Lamar really hasn't made any significant throws. So I think the Chargers Rivers MVP candidate. You're getting Gordon back. You you have Keenan Allen. They're gonna play Hunter Henry, and like you said, if Gates didn't fumble the ball, they probably win that game, so I'm, I'm going with Chargers. All right, so I had the 6C winning. Uh, you had the 3C, which means I had the Colts facing the Chiefs, the Chiefs in, in the second, in the divisional round, and I had and, and I had the Chargers facing the Patriots while you had the Texans going to New England, and you had the Chargers going to the Chiefs. So, with this, with this different outcome, of games, I, I, I'm gonna just I, I start my reason for uh, my winner in this game, and that would be the Chiefs versus the Colts. Um, and I I'm going with the Chiefs in this game. Uh, I think Mahomes is just it's just too good for him to lose to a coach team uh, that's not as talented as them. Uh, yes, Andrew Luck is amazing, and and the offense is amazing as well. Ty probably gonna have a special game, a special day. But I, I, I'm looking I'm looking at the Chiefs. I'm, they got they got the health. Uh, they got Tyree Hill. They got Travis Kelsey. They got uh, what Damian Williams and, uh, and them boys. I feel like when it come down to it, if if Mahomes had the ball last, he's going to win it. Um, and I, and I think I think the Colts will have to put up a lot of points if they want to uh, hang hang to hang uh, with them. I think it's gonna be a close game. Uh, maybe Chiefs win it out uh, seven points or something like that. Um, I'm going with the Chiefs in that. Yeah, for me with my matchup is Chargers versus Chiefs. So. I think the Chargers win that game. I'm I'm going with the Chargers again. Um, just the defense, Kansas City, their their defense just really can't stop anybody. And I just think the Chargers, this is their year to kind of prove, you know, Rivers is an elite guy. This, this is his legacy year to me. And I just think they're going to make a good run. Um, so I have the Chargers winning. Mahomes is going to make plays. But I think the Chargers get the ball last and Rivers drives and makes a – you know, get some in field goal range to win the game, or he throws a touchdown. So I think the Chargers will win it on a uh, a last second drive. All right, then my other matchup will be my uh, Chargers going to the New England Patriots, and 
just like you said, this is the legacy year. I got Chargers going to New England in Foxborough and beating them. The only reason I, I, I am wishing for this matchup to happen is I, I'm really wishing for the Colts to win that game because I don't want the Patriots to be able to duck Ravens or Chargers who win that game. But I got Chargers uh, going into Foxborough, winning. I, I just don't think I just don't think uh, Tom Brady has enough weapons to put up points. Yes. Yes, uh, Bill Belichick is going to take away probably the number one option, but with the Chargers, when you have Mike Williams, you have Tyrell Williams, and you have Gordon, Eckler, Keenan Allen, if if Hunter Henry is, is playing against any eighty percent, that's fine. Antonio Gates, like there's so many weapons. How can Bill Belichick take them all away? And for the Rivers, don't really he don't really pay too much favorites. He just throw the ball, and he's going to throw it. He that's what he's going to do. So I think. I think the Chargers can score enough points and go into New England and go to New England and win. Yeah, and I have Texans versus Patriots. And New England at home will not lose to Deshaun Watson. I mean, you know, like you just said, Texans only have D-Hop. Belichick going to take away D-Hop. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I got Patriots and Chargers in the AFC Championship with New England having the home game. All right, so now we head into our AFC Championship match. Um so I have the Chiefs uh, playing the Chargers, and yes, it's a legacy year for the Rivers. He just he just beat a, a tough Ravens team in Baltimore, and now he just beat Tom Brady in in Foxborough. But I think that comes to an end right here. And when they go back to Arrowhead again, it's it's hard to beat Arrowhead to to beat a team in Arrowhead twice. Um, and in that game when they played. The Chiefs was up 14 points, in control of the game, and blew it. Um, so this time, I, I don't think they're going to let the foot off the gas. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. I love the Chargers, and I think if they do win, of course I'm going to cheer for them to win, but I, that, that home field advantage and at the Chargers, at the Chargers are going on that Ravens run, the emotional, that emotional win at New England, I just think that the Chiefs are going to come out on top because if I have Chiefs playing the Colts, you know, they're not really uh, kind of like pressured, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it's not a – it's not like oh you know because we way more talented than the, than the Colts, yeah. um, but but we're not you know we're not playing the Chargers the second round and getting wa- you know getting wasted for the Asian Championship game. I think they they stay on their toes and um very 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 close game. I think Chiefs uh win and then head will head to the Super Bowl. And I have Chargers uh Patriots, and I'm gonna go with the Road Warriors, the San Diego Chargers. Well, L.A. Chargers. Sorry about that. <laughs> the L.A. Chargers. I I think they will uh you know. It's gonna probably be rough weather in in uh, New England around that time. It'll be a January game, so it could be snowy. Who knows? But I just think it, it's just the Chargers' year. I I can't see why they wouldn't make it to the Super Bowl. I mean, every couple of years, you know, you have that one wild card team that makes the run. You had like the Giants did it, and uh, the Ravens did it when they won. And I just think it's around that time that a road team makes that major run. And I think it's going to be the Chargers. So I have the Chargers going to the Super Bowl, representing the AFC. And what's crazy is I, you know, my my prediction in the preseason was it said uh, was the LA Chargers uh, going, and you know I, I didn't have keys to the playoffs at all, and I, I didn't believe in Mahomes, and he made a believer out of me, um, which is why I'm leaning more toward the Chiefs. But not them not having the defense will be the downfall if they do lose. Um, and I can see I, like I can see the Chargers. Going like I said, being in the road warriors and going on the road and and yeah, take away the Chiefs is very very possible, very very likely. Um, but I'm just going to roll with my homies in my head. <laughs> I, I, I can't blame <laughs> for that. He's gonna be the MVP, so you can't bet against the MVP after the season he's had. It's hard to bet against him. All right, let's, let's, let's switch gears and uh, head to the NFC. We already got an AFC champion uh, already set. So back into the wild card round. We had the uh, the number three Chicago Bears playing the Philadelphia Eagles, who right now you know went on the road and beat LA, beat another playoff team in Houston, and then uh, scorched a, a, a free falling Redskins team with Nick Foles, who I guess got the magic because now you know they run they run better plays, they run the ball more efficient, the defense is good, they can protect, they can rush the passer now. They just do everything better all of a sudden when Carson Wentz gets hurt. Um, so I'm really, 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 really cheering for the Chicago Bears to come out with this W because I don't want to have people thinking that Car- that, that Nick Foles is a better quarterback than Carson Wentz because he's not. Uh, really, really not close. Um, 
But Nick Foles is a guy who's not scared to hang in the pocket and get hit, but um, and make, make the plays and trust his receivers. But um, this Bears defense is something special. It's 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 hard to play these guys. Um, I've seen them twice on TV. Um, as far as my, versus my team, I see them on prime time a lot, and they can just swallow you up from everywhere. And they can, they got an All Pro corner in Kyle Fuller. Eddie Jackson might be an All Pro safety. You got an All Pro with Khalil Mack. You got a Pro Bowl with Akeem Hicks. Uh, you know, could have been the, the rookie of the year if he probably played all the games. And Roquan Smith. It's just so many. It's so much talent on that Bears defense. I don't even have to go into the Bears offense because the Bears defense is is going to limit the Eagles offense. And it, it Bears don't mind winning the game thirteen to five. I mean thirteen to seven or thirteen to ten. They don't mind doing that. Um, and if the Bears get you down, they want to run the ball anyway. So I, and Matt Nagy did, do, does a good um, does a good job at running that. And I just think the Bears is uh, gobble the Eagles up. Yeah, um, same page. I got the Bears also. Bear the defense. And I just think Matt Nagy, when it comes to the offensive side of the ball, I think he can maybe dial up one or two schemes that will get them down and get them, you know, 17 points. And they'll probably win the game like 21-17. And, yeah, and my thing about the the Eagles, and you see, you know, I think they, they really – I think they they won that game against Houston and won the game against L.A. because their pass rush. You know Fletcher Cox is a dog. Uh, Michael Ben and Chris Long and them boys. Like, this, it's a serious D-line. But the Rams, the Rams O line and the Texans O line, from a from a full standpoint, from you know all five guys, aren't aren't as good as what Chicago Bears have. And uh, and now Bears just got Kyle Long back, who their their long started at right guard. He's finally back healthy. Uh, they have uh, rookie and James Daniels been playing great football. They just they just a complete team on the offensive line, and I don't think the Eagles can get that pressure, which makes it better for Mr. Bisky, which makes it better for Nagy's offense. And you know, keep the Bears defense fresh. And I just don't, I don't, I just, I really don't see how Eagles can win this game, unless it's some hail mary, some some fluke stuff like Bears want to turn the ball over. Then that's that's something different. Do do you think um, Doug Peterson having some knowledge on Matt Nagy, or vice versa, has had a, will play a big role in this? I think since they were around each other so much, you know, on Andy Reid's staff, they're familiar with each other. So I think the trick plays will kind of be kept to a minimum. But I think. Matt Nagy, he's gonna he's gonna dial one up, and I think they'll both dial one up. It's just that Peterson's won't work, and Nagy's will work, and that'll kind of be the difference in the game. Um, I see the Bears; they're gonna try to take away Zach Ertz and just make Nick Foles throw it to Aguilar and throw it to Alshon and throw it to Jordan Matthews and guys like that. A lot of think the Bears. They just have a few more playmakers like Cohen and Howard and Gabriel. I just think the Bears have a few more playmakers and they'll win the game. All right, moving to the um, the four or five matchup in the Dallas Cowboys versus the Seattle Seahawks. They played early in the season. Seattle won the game in Seattle. Uh, this is when Dallas didn't have Mark Cooper. Uh, this is when Dallas defense wasn't as confident as they are now, um, especially with Dak as, Dak as well. Um, I think that, I really don't think Seattle comes in here and win this game. Yes, yeah, Seattle been playing good football. They beat Kansas City. Um, you know, they they find a way to beat Minnesota when they when they couldn't do anything all game. Like they they know how to win games. That's Seattle, and I but I just don't think them coming to Jerry World. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be. I don't. I want to say a uh, on the scoreboard it's not going to appear, but uh, I think it's going to be a complete domination. But the scoreboard is going to be close. Um, and I I think that's going to be in control of the whole game. And then you you, you like you wonder like dang. If Seattle make one play, they right back in the game. If Russ can hit Tyler Lockett on a bomb, they right back in and they breathe life into him. And I, th- and I think Dallas is going to keep Seattle around. Um, and then I think in the fourth quarter, they you know put that dagger into him, whether it's a a, a Cooper bomb or a Zeke um, bring it to the crib, or maybe a Dak roll out. He he finds a Col- little Cole Beasley or something. It's, it's going to be a, some kind of play like that that, I, that I'm expecting that would happen that would change the course of the game for the Dallas Cowboys to come up with the W. Um, so and I think that defense is just. Um, not, not, they're not they're not terrible against the run, and I think that's what Seattle's bread and butter is. And that that big that big playability that Seattle does have, can the Cowboys limit it? That's going to be the issue. And we agree again. I'm going with the Cowboys. Um, another close game should be, and I think the X factor is going to be Dak. I think he's going to be the one. This is the game where he earns his money. I think he's going to make a play at the end, probably that's like a you know a 20 yard scramble just to. On third down, just to get them the first down, they can just take a kneel down and kill the clock. Or it may be a case where they need a, 
a touchdown late. He kind of, you know, breaks one off for a touchdown. So I think he's going to be the X factor and win him the game. Um, Russ is going to show up and be Russ. Um, Doug Baldwin may, may show up pretty big for him. But the Cowboys defense, and I think Dak making a making a game clinching place will seal it for him. All right, let's move on to the division around. We both had the same matchup, so that means the that means the Cowboys will travel to the New Orleans Saints. Um, I think this time um, revenge I, game. It's a revenge game for the Saints, and thirteen ten will not win the game for the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys will have to score 20, 27 points to just is a, the, to be in the game to win. Um, I think New Orleans can write the ship this time, especially with a week to prepare, you know, extra week to prepare for, you know, different opponents. But they they might they, – they probably can assume that they're going to get a, the four to five matchup. I, that's why I would assume if I'm Sean Payton. But um, Saints, Saint, I think Saints come out of the way and they, they're, they're hyped up at home, playoffs. This is a 13-3 and three team who who got killed last year in the playoffs. Now they want to win the Super Bowl. They, they're, they're on that revenge tour, that revenge mindset. Um, and I think they're going to beat anybody who's standing their way, and that's the Dallas Cowboys for the divisional round. And I think the Saints go. I think the Saints come out on top. Um, probably, probably win the game. Probably put up thirty points on this Cowboys' great defense. But it's not like I don't think it's going to be like some kind of defense where the defense don't show up. I think it's going to be a good game. And I think the Saints can just can put points on the board. I think I think I think the Cowboys can too as well. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a shootout. I think the Saints are going to going to pretty much cream them this time. They had the film on him from the first game. And, you know, Sean Payton, he, him and Drew Brees, they are pretty unique when it comes to watching film, game planning, seeing where they went wrong, what they could have did better. And I don't think Dak's going to be able to keep up. I think it'll, it'll probably be a, like you said, 30-point game, like a 33-16 type game, something like that. Oh, uh, see, so yeah, I think probably, you know, if, it's, if it is 30, I, I think I think, I think Cowboys lose less than uh, by a touchdown. Um, I think – I think what you seen in the last week seventeen with Dak got the confidence rolling, and I think if he plays Seattle, if it's not if it's a, if it is a high scoring game in Seattle, I think that going to continue kind of like you know that, that kind of momentum build up. You know, of course, everybody want to talk about the Saints defense. I really, it's, I mean, it's okay. It's okay. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's a terrible defense. It's a sol- it's a solid defense, um, but I think they can be scored on. I don't, I really don't think they're going to stop Zeke, especially if Tyron Smith and Zach Martin are healthy. Um, but Saints going to come out and prevail. The Bears and the Rams. That's that's the matchup right there, and I think Chicago Bears come out with it. Um, I don't, I, I just don't see the Rams being that scary team no more as they was um, after the, after that bye week. They haven't scared, they haven't, they haven't shown anything. And and yes, Jared Goff already played his worst game of his career, and that was against the Bears. And I don't see, I don't see why it would change. Uh, this Bears defense is great against the run. They're great against the pass. Uh, like I said, they just have too much. They just had too much, um, too much pass rush, and too much of that D line. They're going to control the offensive line, and I think that Jerry Goff is not going to have no time to find his cooks and find his woods. And and you can't get Todd Gurley going. Uh, if Sean Vay can't do it, I, I think I think Nick Vangio, um, not Nick Nick Vangio. Mm, that's not right. Vic Van, Fangio can find a way to uh, keep Sean McVay at, at bay and and neutralize his like. You know, offensive play called ability. And I think Vic Fangio, uh, this game right here is going to make him a head coach in the next season. I want to go to Bears, but I'm going to go to Rams. Uh, Todd Gurley, he's been – I had him on my fantasy team, so he let me down. But he's been inactive and kind of been resting up, you know. So I think he's going to be rested up, and he's going to make a big imprint on the game. And I think the Rams – I don't think they'll win by a lot, but I think they'll, Todd Gurley is going to be the guy that – Heavy workload, twenty five carries, and he's going to be the, the driving force to the Rams and getting to the NFC Championship. All right, in the NFC Championship game, I have the Saints versus the Bears. Um, I have the Saints coming out on top. Bears traveling on the road once again, and um, after playing one high powered offense, they have the confidence in them. But I see New Orleans. The New Orleans offensive line is better than the Rams, so they can provide more protection for. For Drew Brees, and you know Sean Payton likes to dial up plays that where Drew Brees doesn't have to use his arm strength as much. He's gonna, he's gonna get the ball out of his hands very, very quick. I think the the same defense yesterday is solid. Will be good enough to um to, to stop Mr. Trubisky. Um, you know, and I, I don't, I don't, I think this is this is the type of game where the Chicago offense will have to win the game, like because you know you, you know the saying about uh, defense win championships. 
offense win games. And this is the game that the Bears offense has to score or has to you know, you know keep keep uh, Drew Brees off the field because you know at, at any moment he can just go crazy. And, and no matter how much playmakers the Bears have, can Mr. Trubisky win? And I think he's going to fold in this game. And I think this is where Saints easily win the game and head to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm going with the Saints over the Rams to make it to the Super Bowl as well. Um, I just think it's, it's their year. Um, after after what happened last year, I thought they should have made it last year, but with the wild catch at the end, things like that. Yes, know, sir. It, 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 it didn't go their way. <laughs> so I thought they should have made it that year, but I think this is the year. It's, it's the whole re- revenge tour narrative. They are – Drew Brees is having, I wouldn't say a career year, but he could have been a – he could have been the MVP. Um, Alvin Kamara, he he's on po- he's on point. Michael Thomas, he's on point. Ingram and the defense is playing pretty darn good. So I I'm going with you on the same uh, on the same for the Super Bowl uh, representing the NFC, the Saints. And the smaller nugget is the last time the Saints lost to the Cowboys and Bucks and Panthers in the same season, they won the Super Bowl that year. So I think. Uh, History all repeats itself. Yeah, I think in a weird way it's going to repeat itself. And uh, I think the Saints will be representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. And I think – I'll go ahead and say it I think they will win the Super Bowl. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm right there with you. In the Super Bowl matchup, probably, you know, probably the dream matchup everybody want to see anyway because we've already seen Saint, uh, Rams and Chiefs. We've already seen – we've already seen uh, who else, who, uh, Saints, uh, Saints and Rams. We've seen – Cowboys, Seattle. We've seen Chargers, Chiefs. You know, we've seen all these matchups already before. We've seen Bears and Rams, like, like I mentioned, I have. But we haven't seen the Saints versus the Chiefs, and it's going to be a shootout. Uh, I think the score is going to be 27-24. I think there's going to be a lot of points on the board. I think it'll be a lot of yards on the field. But uh, I think Drew Brees and them get it done because, because one, it just, uh, that de- like I said, the Chiefs defense can crap out all the time, and I think you know, Eric Berry will probably be better, uh, more, I guess, close to 100% in that game, so they it won't be as bad as before. Uh, they got one of the best interior D linemen in the game, and Chris Jones. Uh, so it's going, it's going to be a battle. Um, it's going to be Sean Payton versus Andy Reid. That's a that's a great, a great matchup as far as head coaching in the Super Bowl. It's, it's really, it's really no, no advantage, in my opinion. I think Andy Reid's been through it enough. To know what he needs to get done, Sean Payton, um, same as well, and it's going to be Patrick Mahomes, basically, basically first year versus a Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer in Drew Brees, and that's going to be, and that's going to be fun to watch, and and, and I, I think I think that that's what we always want in Super Bowl. We want something that that's very enjoyable, uh, especially if your team's not in it. You you want to see some good football. And I think the Saints and the Chiefs can provide that uh, the best, and so I'm going chalk one to one uh, for my Super Bowl matchup. Uh, and Saints win twenty seven twenty four. Yeah, uh, I want Andy Reid to make it and win it. He's a, he's a sentimental favorite for me, but I just think the Chargers they they they're gonna be the road warriors. I think they'll make it. Um, and I think Philip Rivers he needs it for his legacy play. Big Ben, two Super Bowl wins, Ben in three, Eli Manning two for two, beat the undefeated Patriots uh, in one of those years. So. Rivers is the only guy from his class made it to a Super Bowl. So I think this is the year. It's going to be a tough road because they're going to play all their games on the road. But it's not like they have a home stadium. I mean, I think that's a that's a Rams town, not a Chargers town. Mm-hmm. So I, I think Rivers, uh, you know, it's just going to be that classic Hall of Fame QB matchup. Rivers versus Breeze, the running back matchup of Gordon and Eckler against Kamara. And uh, Ingram, Keenan Allen versus Michael Thomas. I, I just think that's going to be a, a highly entertaining game just from all aspects. And uh, Anthony Lynn, he'll be on a big stage. I think, you know, I don't think he's going to crap out, but I think he'll kind of get slightly outcoached by Sean Payton, and that's how the, the Saints will win. Well, the, the good thing about the Chargers is they have, a, they have a cheating coaching staff. You know, you got Gus Bradley, who's, who's with Seattle when they won the Super Bowl. Um, and off his coordinator, um, he's he, he slipped my mind. Um, Ken Winshut, you know, he was at the Super Bowl with the Arizona Cardinals. So, like, and Pittsburgh Steelers. So they, he, at least he, his, at least his coaches on his, his staff has the experience. Have so experience. it's like it's kind of, it's kind of like you know, kind of 
crotch him up a little bit. Um, but yeah, that either way, the AFC West need to represent the Super Bowl versus the Saints. Um, I hate the Saints, honestly. Um, to be honest, um, as far you know, just the rival, whatever like that. I, and I hope I hope they lose, but I just can't. I just you know as, taking a, a bias out of it. They just they just the best team. I, I think it's. I, I'm not gonna say it's a drop off, but if we're talking about elite status, um, I think the Saints are the only team there because, uh, 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 like I said earlier about the Bears versus the Rams, I think you know Bears having that pass rush can get to the can get to Jared Goff, um, and that's something I think the the, the Saints are good at. They have a good O line. They have a good D line. They have a solid secondary. They have uh, obviously a great quarterback, great running back, great receiver. And I, they, they, they really don't lack. They don't lack anything. Now they have good kicking game. Uh, I, I guess it's a good punt game. They never punt the ball. So I, you know what I'm saying. So, so it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So it's like every every other team you can point out a, a fault. You can point something out. And I think the Saints just they just have it. Um, they have they have what you're looking for in, in the Super Bowl champion at least for this season. And hopefully, you know, I, I really I really I really hope Drew Brees, if he do win the Super Bowl, um, that he walks out. And retires. Yes, he can still do it. <laughs> go out, go out yeah, on top. Yes, he can do it. But yeah, but be really, but let's be really uh, realistic about this. How many teams are going to repeat? That that doesn't happen. That that's not that's not something that happens. So so why why come back and try to do it again when you know stuff can happen like injuries can happen, uh, movement around the league. You, you do it. I I rather go out on top. Go do do the paint man. And he's already you, you're thirty nine years old. Yes, he's still at the top of your game. But I mean. I, are you gonna are you gonna achieve the Super Bowl again? Maybe, but the likelihood is very, very, very small. Um, so I think Drew Brees, if he does win the Super Bowl, probably win the Super Bowl MVP, go out on the bang, go out on top, and retire, and let somebody you know let somebody else win New Orleans because you did all all you can do, you know, for that city, bring two Super Bowls after after what happened in two thousand four. Hey, you can't you can't put no storybook any better than that. Yeah, you know that would be a a dream scenario, but I don't think uh, it happens that way. I think. You know, it's just that that love of the game and still being able to do it. Him and Brady and you know just the advancements and training and eating all that kind of stuff. I don't think he would. It'll be the perfect story, but I don't think he'll do. It. I think he'll have to come back for one more year and try to repeat, and then he would go out. But if he if they win this year in their home away from home, uh, Mercedes Benz Stadium <laughs> in, in Atlanta, if, if they if they win, that'll be the perfect place to go out. That'll be the perfect way to go out, especially if he wins MVP. That'll be the perfect scenario to go out. I mean, he broke other records early in this year uh, when they played the Redskins. Right. So it, it's not the, it'll, is it, it'll, it'll be the perfect it, way. It's not, it's not that many things he has. He probably has over 30-plus records in the NFL. And like I said, you submit your legacy with two Super Bowl rings. I mean, there's, there's only two quarterbacks in my mind coming right in my mind immediately, or the three that has more than you. I think, I think Terry Bradshaw probably has more. Um, yeah, Bradshaw has obviously four. Tom Brady and Joe Montana. So that's a it's not. So now you're in the class with only three people better than you as far as Super Bowl rings. Uh, you got Peyton Manning right there with you at two, but you won yours at you know at at tip top peak performance while Peyton Manning won it because he had a great defense. So you know what I'm saying. So, so, that, so now you can say now you can submit your legacy and say, yeah, I'm really better than Peyton Manning. Like it's it's really it's I, I really feel disrespected when y'all talk about the best quarterbacks of all time and I'm not. Mention, you know, what I'm saying because a lot, a lot of people don't have Drew Brees, uh, you know, top five. You know, they might, it might have, they have him top ten, but he's not top five. They don't mention him in the likes of Brady, likes of Manny, Montana. But I feel like if he come, if he win the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl run because he's not ducking nobody. Um, because like I said, I have him playing a good Cowboys defense who they lost to already. I have him playing a, a great Bear defense who they who we don't know how that can go. And then you, then you play one of the best. How powered offenses in the season, and you win that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's just a, it's a good, it's a, like I said, it's a good way to go out if he does decide to go out. I know he's gonna come back and try to win another one, but it's not gonna happen. And he's gonna, he's gonna be mad <laughs> and go out as a, you know, not as a top guy. So um, if Drew Brees is doing a Super Bowl, I, I wish you just go, go ahead and buy out uh, and let, 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 don't let my boy Teddy Bridgewater get that, get that starting job, man. <laughs> no, Taysom Hill gonna get the job. <laughs> But I, I would agree. I mean, he's not mentioned amongst the top five, but I think he should be in the top five. But I don't think he's better than Peyton Manning. Now, granted, if Drew does win this Super Bowl, which we both predict he will do, he's going to have two better Super Bowl wins better than Peyton Manning because he will have beaten Peyton for mm-hmm. one, and, and he will have actually carried his team to the second one. 
versus Peyton, who got kind of gifted the first one against the Bears. Rex Grossman, really. <laughs> and then the, the second one, he was bent during the year for Brock Osweiler, and the defense kind of carried that one. So, yeah, he, Breeze would have better Super Bowl wins and things like that, but Peyton's regular season, and he, you know, Peyton, he's never been like, Breeze was going 79. Peyton's always been in the playoffs. Right. I mean, he, he flamed out, but, you know, he's always been regular season MVP and put up astronomical numbers and stuff like that. So Peyton is still going to be one, two, or three. I mean, I'm not sure how people feel about Brady, Montana, Peyton Manning, but I think they're going to always be the top three. And then four and five is kind of where you start getting into, you Patrick know, Mahomes. winning, character team, things like that. <laughs> Patrick Mahomes at number four. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey Patrick, Patrick Mahomes is the new Dan Marino, hey, man. <laughs> hey, if, if Patrick Mahomes can make the Super Bowl his first, really his first season as a starter, hey, if he make it to the Super Bowl in the first year, and, you know, so, like, now that, that expectation is kind of will grow, it, it might be better off if he do lose, like you said, in the, in the AFC Championship game, just because, you know, if you're the Chiefs, and you not, now we're seeing Patrick Mahomes who, you know, now – we're saying guys like Rodgers. We're saying guys like uh, Stafford and Kirk Cousins, all the high-paid quarterbacks, they can't carry a team to the playoffs. But you look at – you uh, to the Super Bowl, like, you know, back in the day with Peyton Manning did. Now, now you see Patrick Mahomes do it, and you say, hey, it's other quarterbacks. Why can't you do it? Because they don't have a defense. They In their losses, they're averaging almost 40 points a game. So it's like, it's, it's like hey, if, Pat, if Patrick Mahomes can do it, and it's, and it's really, really his first year as a quarterback, I don't see why, you know, the other quarterbacks around the league are doing it, but he's going to have that target on his back. And um, and next, the next season is going to be very interesting to see if Patrick Mahomes can keep it up. Yeah, the Chiefs, if they're going to make it, they have to win it this year because from now on, with a year worth of film on them and the defense really not – they're going to have to get the defense better. I think if they don't win it this year, they're going to have a hard oh, time the office. Getting, getting, getting back again because people are going to game plan to – I mean, Tyreek Hill, fast as fast. You can't beat speed. But people are going to start trying to take away certain stuff. They won't have a cream honey no more halfway through the season. So, I mean, and there's going to be – he's elite, but there's going to be some regression. He's oh, not going to yeah. throw 50 touchdowns at 5,000 yards every season. Yeah, that's going to regress. So, I mean, there's going to be some regression. So, if they don't get it this year, I don't know what to say because I think the Colts, if they can make a play and do something going forward with a healthy look, that could be a – a mini, not dynasty, but they could they could they could be next up in the AFC with the Patriots coming down, Rivers coming down. So, I mean, Mahomes luck may be the next rival, mm-hmm. um, but Rivers may have another two three years left in him, and who knows what happens in Baltimore. But I think the Chiefs, if they don't get it this year, I don't think they. I won't count Mahomes out, but they have to get it this year. If if there was any other perfect time, it's oh this yeah. Year. I think I think uh, to be honest, uh, yeah, I said the Saints are probably a step above everybody else. But we, we talked about this before. It's a wide open Super Bowl, um, in my opinion. I, I, I like you can you can you can give me a spiel of why well why the Bears can come out out of the wild card and win it. You can you can say like I say you got the Chargers in the Super Bowl. You got the Ravens can do the same thing. Like I, it's it's really it's really a great. This is a great time. Um, and. You, to be and to be honest, this is why I feel like the NFL is the best sport, um, better than college basketball, better than college football, better than the NBA. Is because it's it's not you know one dynasty. It's not like I mean yes, New England Patriots have been there for a long time, but it's not like they was winning the Super Bowl every single year. So it's like it's, it's always you, you never know because in the Super Bowls that we thought Patriots should win, they lost, and then the ones that they shouldn't have won, they won. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's, it's, it's crazy. It's like but you, but, you, but you know you never know what you're gonna get. March Madness, you, you never get the best team to win a uh, championship really often because they might get knocked out. College football, you know, is really only five or six teams really that's going to win, you know, that's really going to be there. And the NBA, you know, is, is really top heavy. It might be, it might be really five, four or five real contenders, you know. And football, and football it, it, it seems like everybody has a chance at the beginning of the season. And because, like, because I, I know I didn't believe in the Chiefs, I know I didn't believe in the Bears. I didn't believe in this Cowboys defense. I thought Seattle was rebuilding. Um, I didn't think Angelo was going to get healthy in time. I thought Texas – I thought at the 0-3 start, I'm like, yeah, I told y'all Texas wasn't going to be – wasn't going to be there and the Haiti are in the playoffs. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's really – it's really unpredictable. And, and, and when you find, kind of find out, hey, they lost, you know, or you know, they, they, this, this team come out the blue 
Uh, and it's really hard to predict. Um, I don't know. A lot of people had Packers in there. I know I had Packers, Falcons, uh, Vikings. I had uh, Jaguars. They regressed terribly. I had Titans, who was the average team, who I mean, technically, I guess, was there to the final, you know, there to the final game. Last right. week, Pittsburgh, yeah. they're not in the playoffs this year. Like it, it just is you, you don't know, and and that's why that's why I believe in the the best sport in this. And like I said, we don't even the same Chiefs or the same Chargers. We could be wrong. It could be I mean I, you know, I'm just throwing our names. It could be uh, Texans Bears. You know what I'm saying? It could be it. It would it would shock me if it, that, that is it. But it's like really, it's like man. I mean, really, they had they had, they had all had a great season. It's not like. They are ter- they're terrible teams, blah blah. So it really can go either way, and I'm very very excited for this for this uh this uh playoff season to start. But yeah, before the season, I thought it was gonna be Steelers and Saints in the Super Bowl, and some people thought. I know we watched Colin Cowherd; he had the Falcons in the Super Bowl. So you know, this year was really unpredictable as far as who would come out. Yeah, and it's gonna be. It's been a good. It's been a good yeah. season. It's gonna be a fun. Oh, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be very fun. But uh, let's let's go and get out of here. I uh, appreciate you for joining me today, man. Most definitely, man. Anytime, always. You know what? Preach, chair, preach. We out. We out.